The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbel. Welcome to it. Great to have you in on a Friday. It's Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, Connor Clark. Hope you're doing all right. We'll dive into plenty of topics a week into spring football, Husker baseball in action, and some thoughts on the NCAA, the uh, Sweet 16 down to the Elite Eight. One more cut round to go. And uh, we'll also get into uh, what is for dinner on Easter Sunday, how are you? How are you rolling? What type of uh, delicacy are you going with? We'll uh, dive into it. And uh, what, what are you giggling about? Uh, I am trying to figure out who the hell keeps on moving this freaking loud chair to this spot in the studio. Just, just excuse yourself and and switch your backpack out with the. Well, that's, creaky chair. That's not the, the good chair is over there, and I don't know why. I always move it over here. Then how did, how did you not notice this before we started recording? Uh, that's I. I really <laughs> should have noticed it. I didn't. <laughs> but once the studio gets quiet and you realize everything gets picked up by the mic, the creaky you're chair going, really stands out. Yeah. You know, you're going Peter Griffin there with the little squeaks. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Apologies uh, for that. I'll, no, I'll get that changed out here momentarily. Fine. You don't have any uh, WD-40, any oil, nothing. Mm, we. <laughs> No, I'm not going to say that. No, there's nothing. <laughs> no? No. All right. There used to be, for some reason, a, a like a little thing of lube in there, but... Sure. Yeah, well, that... there used to be a lot of things in here, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a part of the pile of garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the lube was always the one I went, why is that in there? We have sunscreen. I, I, yeah. Does don't that con- work? Don't confuse one for the other. <laughs> 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 well, I'm planning when on it. When you're sunbathing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yes. Yeah. 489 1240 to get in. Off 4, to 8, start. 489 1240. Brennan's comment just totally embodies the show. 800 825 5865. Black Hills Brennan says, Happy Friday, folks. We'll get our starting five. And I will briskly go through the ways you can hear us. That way it does not uh, drone on and. I'm, I'm taking the uh, constructive criticism uh, from earlier in the week. And, you know, it, it's always great to have feedback. Uh, Ted has weighed, weighed in, also got in with his player wish list. But Todd's telling me to shut the hell up and start talking sports. So we'll get there. But, but Todd, just so you know, and Elijah can switch out his chair, NASCAR pit style, uh, Hale Varsity YouTube, where you can watch the show. Can check us out, Hale Varsity Radio, Twitter at H Varsity Radio, and as always, can find the show on the different social media platforms. Chris at HaleVarsity.com. Still a lot of comments on that uh, past or current player you'd want to see for opening day, so we may re- revisit some of that. What are you doing tonight as a basketball fan? I don't know how many Creighton fans are in the audience on this Friday. That being said, you got to pick one. Are you rolling Creighton tonight, rooting for Creighton, or are you rooting for the SEC? Kind of a tough call. Or maybe it isn't a tough call. But uh, think about that. We'll spend time with Jacob Padilla. His thoughts on the NCAA tournament, Nebraska basketball, and their portal uh, options out there. William Kyle set to visit Monday which is big for Nebraska, but he's got a lot of sewers, so Jacob will talk some hoops. Get some thoughts from spring football from Jacob in 15 minutes. Pride of Fairbury, NBC Sports, Bill Dolman joins us at 5, and we'll get into uh, our picks with the Friday forecast. As Klausberg going to join us, we'll get through the rest of the Sweet 16 and into the Elite Eight for that stage that's set for the Final Four. 489-1240, let's get the Starting five shout-outs right now as uh, we uh, welcome you in. Eat Beef got in first. Dylan says, I am number two. Uh, Moronic Figures, don't call it uh, a crowd, but I'm in for three. And Moronic, thank you for getting in here at 345. 
Uh, Jeff Snitley in it four. Mr. Snitley, part of the Boulder Peace Treaty. Patrick rounds out five. The sixth man is crew. Rewind 2001. Uh, so, 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 so no South Stadium renovations. Okay. Ty from Western Nebraska. Ty, thank you for chiming in. And your grandpa is in. Brian says, what's up? Uh, Shane checks in. Shane, good to have you. Shane oh, from Santa Cruz. Santa Love Cruz. Santa Cruz. Yeah, been I'd there be, once. Not been. I had some family in the area, so I got a chance to go see Santa Cruz. Their pier is lovely. Okay. Uh, Roger says, what's up? Trev says, hi. Uh, Scott is in, and uh, we'll have more of your comments and uh, as we get rolling. So, Easter Sunday dinner. You're drafting what? Ham? Turkey? Steak? Or would you go exotic and say, give me rack of lamb? I've done lamb, the lamb before. I've not done my own lamb. Nodder at, at uh, Billy's kills it. Oh. It's awesome. His, his rack of lamb's phenomenal. But he's the professional, so that's what you, that's my go-to there. Uh, so it is a free shot out Friday. It's okay. That said, I mean, listen, ham is just so good. You get the bone in ham. I think I'd pick that over the turkey. I think I got to go steak over ham, and I think I would even go rack of lamb over ham. But that all being said, tur- uh, the, the ham's a great call, and that's the most normal call. Ham's in the bottom. Really? Oh, it's bottom tier. I, I don't like ham. At all? No. Really? No, it's just not when good. We, when we talk about this field or just ham overall? A ham overall. I don't even okay. like ham and cheese sandwiches. Like Ham is just, it's overrated. Okay. It's overrated. In that my is book. Elijah Herbal. I'd, I'd rather have turkey. Herbal Essence. Tur- really? Turkey, turkey over ham. Brother, turkey is, unless you, you, you smoke it or get the, the, the key, breast. You got to yeah. brine it. You got to. Well, sure. You got to brine it to keep it nice and juicy. But if you do that, yeah, I'll take the turkey over the ham any day. Okay. Ham, uh, ham is just like not good. I don't understand the, the infatuation with ham. Because it's awesome. So I got ham at the bottom, <laughs> then I'm going turkey, then I'm going rack of lamb, then I'm going steak. That's from bottom to top. I'm I'm probably going filet. I mean, if I'm going to go steak first, if I'm if I'm putting the the dinner together. Crew wants just take out Chinese. That's that's what he's about. Uh, Brennan from the Black Hills is going uh, uh, tri tip. Good call there. Uh, Red wine says horseradish. Uh, steak is on Nu Grandpa's menu. Nice, love that. That's cool. Uh, Connor, where are you going? Well, we usually have ham on on Easter. I mean, if you're talking in general, it's not going to be my first choice. But I don't. I enjoy. I enjoy ham. I mean, I I like the the, the good old honey baked ham. Uh-huh. So I, mean, I think it's especially when stuff. someone else is making it. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Uh-huh. How many of us uh, have done the the uh, Easter Sunday ham? Have made it for others. We did it once, and uh, the lovely wife doesn't cook a whole lot. But when she did do the ham, like this was year one of our marriage, we hosted Never Again. Uh, and it was it was great. She nailed it. Uh, and your grandpa also wants to know, is the stadium project to go or what? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Not, if maybe, I would show hey, I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah, not not right now. Did maybe. Elijah Can we say maybe? Can we hilarious. say maybe? But I, I think it's down the old totem pole. That'd be my guess, my read. Well, it's the, something to be named later. To be safe. To be safe, South Stadium ain't going down in December. I would put a lot of money on the fact that by the time late December, early January rolls around, South Stadium will still be standing. I'll say that for now. Mm -hmm. If it is coming, it is not going to be coming on schedule. Classic construction project. But I'm saying, like, it's going to have some sort of revisiting. Uh, I still think renovations are going to be coming in some way, shape, or form. You'll spend some money on it, but you're not going to spend $450 million. I I think the program – or the – the project as it currently stands is dead. I don't think the project overall is dead. You got to do something to it. And uh, Roger checks in and says, Turkey's just a delivery mechanism for anything put on it. Uh, Tim going with ribeye, nice. uh, uh, room temperature. And Roger also says hosting is overrated. See, thankfully, my brother is hosting Easter on Sunday. Which do you is chip lovely. in? Um, we are trying to determine a menu today. Current menu items include deviled eggs. Gro- that's, you, that's your... Yeah, oh, deviled eggs are my thing. There is never a time when deviled eggs are bad, but especially springtime, Easter, I need some deviled eggs. Because um, you can, like, dye the eggs, mm. and then you can boil them. Or you say, boil them, make the deviled eggs, and then you can uh, 
make the deviled eggs with like the colored eggs. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, I digress. And grilled asparagus. Those are the two things that we currently have on the menu. There's nothing else that's been firmly established. I can tell you it's not ham. No, it's the texture. <laughs> Something's off about the texture of the ham. The flavor's fine. The texture is just no. Roger says after the uh, bowl game appearance, the South Stadium will be a go. That, yeah, win and then people will donate. Not that people wouldn't donate, but it'll be a little easier to get the yes. Let's talk some spring football, fellas. We'll take more of your uh, Easter Sunday slash holiday weekend uh, meat of choice. What are you going with? What are you serving? A little food here. Husker baseball tied at two right now against Northwestern. So the theme of this first week, the theme of this spring is competition. We've got a little competition here with what the uh, – the main course will be for, for Sunday. So Elijah's out on ham. Uh, Connor's like, I'll, I'll deal with ham. And I like it, but if I'm spending money to, to host and I'm, I'm bringing people over, I'm going to fire the grill up somehow, some way. Competition. Okay, spring ball. And that's good for this program. That's good for folks who had a pretty highly productive year one uh, under Matt Rule. But that ask is going to get a little little greater from Matt Rule. He's been very clear on that, not only as quarterbacks, but also the, the running back room, right? And we've all come to agreement. Elijah had a great point earlier in the week with no matter who the quarterback is, young or old, uh, you have the run game and that offensive line that needs to be in unison, that needs to have an identity. Uh, Searles seconded that. And Right now, the running back room has got some question marks, right? What you have coming back is Emmett Johnson. You have Ramir Johnson that is your third down dude, kind of your your safety valve. Uh, Gabe Irvin also uh, back for now, and you hope he can stay healthy. And, and I know he's out this spring, but you got two experienced multi-year guys there. Dowdell is the new guy who didn't do a whole heck of a lot just for, for, from a limited time at Oregon, but you love his upside and ability. So, And then uh, you have uh, the other kid that, that didn't see much, Quentin Ives, mm. that is, is somebody that Nebraska fans are wanting to, to get a glimpse of here this spring game. Let's hear from Rule on that running back room and specifically what Emmett Johnson is doing right now how big a spring is this for him and others yeah Emmett's a guy that um when he was called on made plays he's one of our our most athletic people we keep track of everything force plate jumps heights 10 yard dash standing 10 yard dash I mean we keep track of everything and in all his metrics he's you know in the upper percentages so he's just a an, an elite athlete and um I think for him it's just about continuing to get reps to continuing to get comfortable um, but he proved last year that he, he's, he's, a, he's a man who, when given the opportunity, can, can make yards and can make big plays. You think about the run he made to end that, whether Northwestern or Purdue, I forget. I'm sorry, Purdue, I think. Uh, the run he made to set up the win against uh, Maryland, which unfortunately didn't end up being a win. So he's made those big runs. Um, he's bigger, he's faster, he's stronger. Big spring for him. Amen. And, and I like Emmett Johnson. I like what he's become. I like his grind. I think that extra gear he showed once he got to the second level and beyond, specifically the Purdue, specifically the Maryland game, I feel good. And the the fact he's like, dude, I'm going to try and dunk over you at halftime, uh, showcase that <laughs> athleticism. So well, it, I like Emmett Johnson. What I don't know about Emmett Johnson is, and I'm not saying he can't do it, but in this offense, you're going to want to be able to, to, to dump off, right, uh, and, and check down to the running back make uh, the running back, any running back in there, a, a receiving option. And from a, a blocking standpoint, you're going to have a lot more emphasis or you'll need to be as good as you can be with pass pro on play action to keep uh, your, your prize quarterback or whoever's back there behind center uh, upright and healthy for as many games as possible. So I like Emmett. He'll keep going. What I'll say is – Is he it, your pick to, to maybe emerge after this spring? I'm not going to doubt any running back that was kind of hand-chosen by Ron Brown out of high school. Ron Brown knows running backs. He's been coaching running backs for a long time. If Ron Brown says, we need this kid, Emmett Johnson, he's Mr. Football Minnesota, I think you're going to go trust what Ron Brown has to say. Ever since like it was Ron Brown's pick kind of for Emmett Johnson, the guy that, that Ron Brown went and found, I went, okay, Nebraska's probably got a pretty good running back here. 
Um, that being said, it, it's it's still Dowdell's job to lose. It's got to be right with his talent coming out of Oregon. Mm-hmm. You saw it flash at times for the Ducks last season. He had ninety carries. I mean, ninety yards. That's it. But you could see it in limited snaps. He was he was stuck deep on the depth chart whenever he did get in. I understand it's the fourth quarter. I understand it's garbage time. You could see that that mix of the athleticism flash. and power. You could see it flash despite the fact that he wasn't extremely productive, didn't get all that many carries. You saw the flash. Well, think about the guys he's going up against in practice every day a season ago. I mean, that Oregon team was really, really good. Mm-hmm. So. Same with and, – and we we give credit to the Nebraska defense. Mm-hmm. I mean, top six in the country uh, when you look at – where they ended up and, and, and how good they were. And Dowdell just physically looks like a, a Big Ten running back. Sure. No, I don't disagree with that. Dowdell's a dude that you go get because you're, you're uncertain, but you have a spring to kind of make your case. And you need options. <laughs> you need bodies because you saw in a real quick hurry how depleted your running back room got. And you nailed it with the Ron Brown call. It's not only what the, the kid is like coming out of high school – but Ron Brown comes from that era of being able to project, see into the future. This is what he is now. This is what the kid can become as he keeps working and developing. And we know Rule and Company are really high level with uh, with development. So a thought on Emmett Johnson. We'll get Jacob Padilla's take on some other position groups, the portal for Nebraska basketball, and Creighton and Tennessee. Jacob Bedell is next with Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Thanks for hanging out, Hale Varsity, on a Friday. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. Cliff is in. Sorry, sorry, fellas. I was running from the feds just a little late. Cliff, you're all good. Better uh, late than never. Uh, so, uh, Cliff, keep battling, brother. We're thinking of you. Uh, he gets back to Nebraska next week. We say hi to Jacob Padilla at Jacob Padilla underscore. Great coverage all year long when it comes to all things Nebraska and Creighton. Jacob, a big one tonight with the Jays and Rocky Top. We'll get there in a second. I want to go to the portal, though, and uh, get your feel on Fiddler in Nebraska and also William Kyle, two great talents from Bell West, and uh, you know what? Frankie was amazing for, for UNO. He's checking out some other options. William Kyle's got a, well, a long line of folks that are interested in him. What's your, uh, what's your feel here for both of these kids right now as we talk Friday? Yeah, I know uh, Frankie's visiting Wisconsin. It uh, seems like he's certainly got some strong ties up there with, with Chucky Pepper and up there. Um, obviously, high school AAU teammates, those guys that played – Played a lot of basketball together. Uh, those are those guys are really close. So I, I think Nebraska is trying to make a strong push for him. I know Korean had him visit as well, uh, and now he's up to Wisconsin. So I, I don't know. It, it kind of feels like Wisconsin might have a really strong chance there with Frankie there just to reunite those two. As for William, um, I, I think our, our Mike Sodder kind of put out some of the uh, the recent interest there, just the, the teams that have contacted him and the ones that have kind of take the next step and are setting up visits. I know Texas A&M, Buzz Williams is going to, to visit him uh, at his place. And then Nebraska is getting an unofficial visit as well. Obviously, he would fit some of their needs uh, and kind of when you come out this season looking like, all right, they need athleticism, rim protection, uh, uh, the ability to kind of provide some vertical spacing there on, on rolls to the rim. Like, everything that they need William can provide there so it would be a good fit but uh like you said long list of suitors there and it'll be interesting to see kind of how these visits go and what the conversations are like and what William's looking for Jacob real quick with Nebraska's run to the tournament is Nebraska more of a a conversation piece for some of these metro kids that you know maybe would entertain an offer i mean there's, there's got to be a little more serious seriousness to nebraska from a consideration point uh, consideration standpoint since nebraska had this past season wouldn't you think i certainly think they're getting there and yeah. you kind of look back to uh to baylor shireman and just kind of where the two programs were when he decided to enter the portal and just where crane was as the program is exactly why he picked them just a combination of the the playing style and the ability to compete at the highest level and have uh, success. Um, so that kind of won out there over Nebraska where they were at, at that point. Now Nebraska's coming off tournament run, 
seems like they're heading the right direction. Uh, the guys seem uh, just kind of the, the culture of the program seems more inviting at this point than maybe it was a couple of years ago. So and it's, I certainly think they're getting there, um, but probably still work to be done in terms of uh, that being the reason. Like I think Nebraska is still in a place where you're getting the Josiah Alex, the, the Sam Griesel that have more kind of personal ties to the program um, because all things being equal, some of these other programs probably can offer a little bit more at this point uh, without that, that kind of hometown tie there. Um, but certainly they're at the point now where you can go into those conversations to offer uh, a successful program, a place where you can come in and, and win games and potentially make the postseason. Jake, I want to get back to, to William Kyle here for just a second. He's a Bellevue West kid, but he's not one of the guys you think of from the past five years of the championship run. I mean, he is, but you think of Fiddler, you think of Hepburn. With Kyle, why do you think he kind of flew under the radar in his recruitment, or, or is it just a case of a guy that really developed once he got to South Dakota State? Well, what what took William Kyle from being a guy that was you know, being recruited by South Dakota State, which is a respectable school, to now having the who's who of Power 5 come into his doorstep? Well, he surprised South Dakota State with how good he got by the time the season rolled on. They, they didn't expect him to play the role that he did as a freshman. Uh, and he he's just a guy that kind of a late bloomer who has developed rapidly. And the, the thing that was kind of stood out to me in watching William, just as kind of like Tom come up through high school, mm-hmm. is just his uh, mobility, versatility defensively, just his ability to, ball, uh, to guard ball screens in multiple ways, to, to stay alive in switches. Uh, obviously, good athlete. Um, I think as he's gotten to South Dakota State, he's really he's hit, hit the weight room hard. Like he's really bulked up from where he was in high school, and that certainly helped him because he was kind of coming out of high school. He was kind of like an undersized kind of tweener. Um, was, was he really big enough to to play the, the five at that level? Especially because he doesn't really have perimeter skills. So coming out of high school, he's kind of. Uh, I mean, he was a kind of D two fringe D one guy um, by the end of his like summer. And then just continue to get better, and South Dakota State uh, ended up pushing hard for him and got him, and he continued to develop once he got there. And even this year, um, he, he moved to the bench early in the season for about a ten-game stint as South Dakota State was kind of uh, trying to figure things out early. It wasn't really clicking for him and for the team, and they were moving things around, trying to figure out what works best. And then they made kind of some scheme tweaks, and he got back in the starting lineup and just took off. And down the stretch was uh, terrific for them, and I was really impressed with what I saw of him um, during the, uh, the the NCAA tournament here against Iowa State, where Iowa State kind of definitely outclassed South Dakota State. I mean, it's the two seed going against the Summit League team, but he looked the part. Like, he did a great job of handling the physicality of making good decisions, had some really nice passes, uh, and then went up and finished strong. So I was impressed with what I saw of him. He's, he's the guy that's just con- continued to work hard and has earned this opportunity for sure. And, and to, could we have the same type of conversation with Fiddler? Because he's a guy that also kind of flew under the radar. He was playing second fiddle, uh, no no pun intended there with Fiddler, uh, to, to Chucky Hepburn during his time at, at Bellevue West, goes off to UNO and really turns himself into a player there as well. It's a similar story with him. What would, led to, to his development at UNO? Yeah, kind of the same thing. I think it's just continuing to, to, to work, to, to get better. Because it wasn't like Frankie – with, with him, it was a case of where he was impressive as a freshman and people were at that point talking about, oh, are they going to be able to keep him? Are high majors going to come get him? And then second year wasn't quite like he didn't take the uh, make the leap forward that you would have hoped. Um, but then he came back this year and in the second year with uh, Crutchfield and those guys, and um, he, he found a way to kind of elevate his game once he got into Summit League, Summit League play, he kind of figured out what works best for him, where, where he really excelled and just kind of started leaning into that and found a way to be a 20 point a game scorer. So it's a guy that just has continued to work. And again, it hasn't, wasn't smooth start to finish. Obviously Omaha didn't have the success that, um, that I'm sure he would have liked and uh, everybody in that program would have liked, but he was able to kind of find his game there at Omaha. And I think kind of like, uh, like Baylor Sharman coming out of South Dakota state where he goes somewhere else. Um, he probably doesn't have the freedom to explore his game and figure out, all right, what can I do at this level? What can I not? How, how can I be the best version of myself? And that's kind of the, the benefit of maybe coming out and going to a lower level than maybe your potential might um, allow you to play at one day is you can find yourself and kind of take that path to where 
you're being the best player that you can be. And now with the portal, you have the opportunity to move up later on in your career. So I think those are just two examples of guys that certainly had some tools, uh, some skills coming out, but they continue to work on those and have kind of made themselves into the best version of themselves here after two, three years in college. Jacob, this is a newer addition to the portal, but Pharrell Payne out of Minnesota is yeah. available now. Nebraska is kind of in the mix for him. What do you think about him, and what kind of shot should Nebraska take at a big guy like Payne who's been in the conference? Yeah, kind of, he's little, uh, kind of little thicker body, um, maybe not quite as uh, versatile, but probably a little bit, again, bigger, better, more proven at this level than William Kyle. But he, again, brings some of the same things where a true kind of five rim roller, a rim protector, a guy that can go grab a couple of boards there. Um, so he, he's a guy that, again, brings some of those things that th- this roster was really missing last year and that they kind of need to, to be able to, to match up better with the teams they might run into on the hop, top end of the conference and in the postseason. So he's a guy that um, I, think, I've, I think we've seen that they've been in contact with, they're going to make a push for, uh, but like pretty much anybody that enters the portal at this point, uh, it's going to be a long suitor list, and we'll have to see kind of as the, pr- the, the kind of process plays out. Um, is Nebraska in the mix? Is, uh, are they a program that Payne would be interested in? But we'll certainly see them take their best shot, I think, there. We get uh, a little deep with some of the uh, thoughts here on, Jake, we might need three minutes on the other side for tonight's matchup. But as far as the Nebraska departures, are you surprised by – some of the scholarship openings for, for Fred and company with Nebraska? A little bit, like not, not terribly shocking. I think the Ramel Lloyd Jr., no surprise there, just the way that played out. With Blaze Keita, just kind of with the injury situation, never got a chance to kind of really establish himself. Um, and then Eli Rice, I, I don't, that one's a hard read. Like he's a guy that maybe could have started to earn more playing time before that ankle injury, mm-hmm. and then that kind of just – end of the season there and you never know how kids are feeling about that especially with guys coming back next year potentially um guys that maybe are in similar positions to him um but uh and, and then the cj wilcher I, I think that's a case of a kid that um he graduated from here he he's got his degrees a grad transfer now he gave the program three years uh and he uh it, it never really progressed to where like he um, could take the next, like you look at his productions, pretty similar. Obviously, the, the percentages, the efficiency has been up and down, but he's always kind of been the same guy at Nebraska. Uh, and so now after three years, he helped, he, he played a, an important role, I think, over the last few years as they, they made it through this process of going from where Nebraska was two, three years ago to making the NCAA tournament. Played an important role this year, but now last year of college, um, I think it's understandable that a guy, I don't know, maybe, Maybe either wants to transfer down, maybe go back closer to home. Obviously, his brother is playing at St. John's. Um, we'll we'll kind of see what his recruitment looks like, but it, it certainly makes sense here. And I think he's a guy that will leave with Nebraska, with great great feelings about Nebraska and then Nebraska feeling great about him and what he provided to this program. And correct me if I'm wrong, four scholarship openings for Nebraska in the transfer portal. Is that right? Uh, yeah, well, I think they're up to five I think up total. To five. I think five? They, okay. Obviously, four have left and um, – so, and they had uh, a couple of scenes. So, yeah, that's it got some spots to fill for sure, but they do have the, the, the whole core. I mean, we'll have to see some final decisions on some of these other guys, but no news is probably good news at this point. So you got a good core support uh, coming back that you can build around as you look to the portal. Jacob, hang tight if you could. I got to get your, uh, your feel on Creighton, Tennessee tonight. Some turdy thoughts. You've uh, seen the Jays in postseason up close and personal. So uh, can you hang on? Is that all right? Yep, got a few. All right, cool. Good enough. There he is, Jacob Badilla, all things uh, basketball for you. And uh, can find and follow Jacob on Twitter, at Jacob Padilla. Read him with Hale Varsity and Herd Ad Sports. Jacob's even grabbing a mic and a camera for some Husker post practice, which is good stuff. Uh, more with Jacob Padilla. On a Friday, it's Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Logger. And now, and now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Well, Karen making it happen for Nebraska baseball. Top of seven, RBI single, big red up three to two over Northwestern. Jacob Bedilla with us, all things basketball. Let's get into Creighton, Tennessee. 
And uh, one of the questions out there for the audience today is, are you cheering for Creighton? If you're a big red fan, are you cheering for the SEC? Quite uh, a choice there. In all seriousness, Creighton, uh, an amazing program, and Coach Mack and company, uh, familiar territory. Again, trying to get to back-to-back you know, Elite Eight appearances. Jacob, what's it come down to tonight? Tennessee's loaded. They're talented. They've got an All-American. They're pretty versatile. All that being said, Creighton is so explosive and athletic. What's uh, – a key tonight for you and, and how you feeling about tip off. It's kind of, you look at the, this matchup and Tennessee's elite defensively, one of the best in the country. But the interesting thing is they don't, they, they allow a high number of three point attempts against them. Like their defense is very much geared towards uh, being really disruptive, protecting the basket, um, being in the gaps, taking things away. And so if Creighton can handle that, can handle the kind of pressure at the point of attack with a guy like Zakai Ziegler, one of the best defensive point guards in the country, uh, and, and their aggressiveness on the wings, and they got some rim protection as well, if they can handle that and not turn the ball over, I think they're going to be able to get good looks. If they make good decisions, they're strong with the ball, um, and they're prepared for what Tennessee is going to throw at them, and then it'll come down to whether or not they're hitting them. Obviously, against Oregon, they, they can't miss as many open threes early in, in this game as they did against Oregon if they want to give themselves a chance. But I do think if Creighton is smart with the ball, can handle it, can handle the physicality, they're going to be able to get their looks off. And it'll just be a matter of are, are they hitting them? Because Creighton is a better three point shooting team and they're better at taking away threes th- than Tennessee is. So that's kind of the big equalizer in college basketball a lot of times. Jacob, I don't want to look too far ahead, but I will. Should Creighton get it done, Purdue or Gonzaga? What is the preferred matchup there in your mind in terms of who Creighton would match up better against with a, a trip to the Final Four on the line? I, I mean, I, I'd, I'd probably just say Gonzaga because I think per, Purdue's the better team. And uh, the storylines would certainly be interesting in that one. And Purdue, you've got the kind of like, oh, can – Purdue get it done, like the doubt is always going to be hanging around them until they actually do it. But this year's team is a lot better than last year's that lost, and last year's probably doesn't lose that same game. Like you play that game 10 more times, it probably doesn't go the same way. Uh, and this team is better. So I, I think all season long, Purdue, Houston, and um, and UConn have kind of established themselves, separated themselves from the rest of the pack. So if you can find a way to avoid having to go through one of those teams to, to get to the, the, the Final Four, then... Uh, I'd do it, but Gonzaga is certainly playing much, much better now than they did the first half of the season. Who's your guy that you need to see have a great game tonight for Creighton in order for them to pull off the the win here? Hmm, that's an interesting one because we'll have to see what the matchups are. Um, kind of where do they decide to put Zakai Ziegler? Like, is he on Stephen Ashworth? If if that's the case, then it might have to be a big Trey Alexander game because uh, you don't want to really have to kind of force things against Ziegler's ball pressure. Um, he's going to be up pressing the ball, try to get it out into Alexander's hands and play in transition there if if he's, uh, if he's Ashworth's getting hounded. If if they switch the key Ziegler over onto Trey Alexander, then maybe that's a game where, where Steven gets loose and he's a guy that's got to be able to knock down threes. I, I think uh, I've kind of talked about it throughout this. He, he really is the difference between this team being in, one of the best in the country and being able to beat anybody and a team that just has to grind out chance to win because you look at the defensive attention paid to kind of the big three w- with Kalkbrenner, uh, Alexander, and Baylor Shireman. Ashworth is the guy that's you're not going to have enough good defenders and defensive focus to really take away quality looks for him a, a lot of the time. And with his ability to catch fire, uh, he can swing a game at any point. So it'll come down to matchups and how they choose to, to, to kind of guard Creighton's guys. Um, I think you're going to have to see Shireman and Connect kind of go back and forth there, cancel each other out to a certain degree. Um, so it could come down to just whoever whoever doesn't have Ziegler on them um, and gets kind of a little bit more freedom. You got to go make plays. A, a sneaky guy I think might have to have a big game tonight for Creighton is uh, is Ryan Kalkbrenner. I'll just say that the presence that he brings down low. I have to think about it defensively tonight, but defensive and, re- and rebounding. But I want to see him versus Edie real I, bad. I'd love to see that. <laughs> real bad. Yeah, that's spicy. That, that'll, be, that'll be good. Uh, Ashworth, I mean, does he have a UConn night or not, right? I mean, when yeah. he's just in fuego. Jacob, uh, 
last thought before we say goodbye and have a great weekend. Thanks for your extended time. Husker Spring Football, and uh, you've been uh, paying attention to that. We talked a little bit about the running back room and the options there, but competition's the theme. And uh, just impressions from this first week with uh, what you saw, but also what you heard. <laughs> I mean, just the more and more we see, the more Matt Rule was just built to be a college football coach. I, I just kind of enjoy the, the, the ways that he is always trying to keep things fresh and finding ways to get the most out of his guys. And whether like, and he's, he's like, yeah, he, he acknowledges like some of this is, is gimmicky, but it works and it keeps things interesting. So kind of the splitting the team into uh, three different squads and even the, with the naming things there with kind of the homage to uh, pre corn Husker days for Nebraska and all that type of stuff. Um, I think it's just a good way. Cause like, Spring can be a grind. Um, it's 15 long practice, whatever, however long they're they're going to do it. Um, you're beating on each other over and over again. And by the when you get to the end of it, you still got a long time until you get to play somebody else. So any little thing that you can do to kind of keep the guys engaged, keep them interested, give them a little different um, look at it, I think it's really smart. Mm-hmm. And, well, um, is just one way to get the most out of these practices. So. That was kind of one of the things that stood out. Just like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Just listen to, to Rule and some of the players talk about it uh, as well. Rattlesnakes, Gold Knights, or Bug Eaters? What is the best former Husker mascot? I guess Nebraska mascot. Well, I, I think you'd probably take uh, the, uh, the, the the Gold Knights in a fight there, certainly. So, uh, <laughs> the... Oh, we're going leech with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going the old pirate, uh-huh. the, the mascots and – uh-huh. The, uh huh. The that that was classic. Jacob, have a great weekend. Thanks for the time, man. All right, thanks, guys. There he is. Find him, follow him, read him uh, with Herd at Sports, Hail Varsity, on Twitter at Jacob Padilla, and uh, he'll have thoughts and and some awesome breakdowns of Creighton. Moonbot Seven is in. Howdy, nerds. As uh, he is checked in. What's, well, your, what's your guys' thoughts real fast? Gold Knights, Rattlesnakes, or, or Bug Eaters? I mean, I, I always, when I was a little kid, I would see Bug Eaters gear like, yeah, around the hay market, so I always kind of liked the Bug Eaters. It's just like so Nebraska, the Bug Eaters, mm-hmm. which is why I like it. Because I feel like the, gold, like the Golden Knights, I mean, obviously there's a hockey team now that wasn't around before, but I feel like that's just kind of like basic. Like what, like... What does a Golden Knight have anything to do with Nebraska, unless I'm historically incorrect here? And the rattles, the rattlesnakes is cool, but well, I feel like the bug eaters is just so Nebraska that it's like cool. The, the rattlesnake boys make sense, is. especially if you go out to the western uh, part of the yeah. state. There's also one that's forgotten, which is a little lame. That's the tree planters, the <laughs> Nebraska tree planters. The you Arbor hip, Days, you hippies. <laughs> and it was technically not. It was the old gold knights, which sets it apart. That sounds from like a Vegas. that sounds like a cigarette. The old the gold. Old gold. <laughs> I love my old golds. Don't smoke, kids. Promise me that. Okay. I promise well, I don't either. Well, uh, well yeah. I've been accused uh-huh. many times. Yeah. Just you know, old <laughs> Connor just rolls into a steam room, and instead of steam, it's <laughs> it's second hand. Get that voice deeper. Uh, we'll wind down hour one. Hail Varsity continues, powered by Cornhead Lager. Hail Varsity Radio is live. Now, back to Schmitty. Schmitty's a great guy, but he don't have a brain. And Elijah. You want me to speak? When I point you, yeah. On Hail Varsity Radio. One final time, we're 10 minutes away. Bill Dolman, pride of Fairbury NBC Sports, going to be with us for the second hour. We'll get to Clausburn in the Friday forecast as we'll pick the Sweet 16. And uh, the remaining games tonight, slate, tomorrow's slate to get to that uh, Elite Eight set up. And uh, I want to remind you about buckling up. Coaches make substitutions during the game to get the best player on the field. Getting behind the wheel after drinking also demands a substitution. Impaired driving, deceptively dangerous. A message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. So, SEC or Creighton, how are you leaning? tonight as a either a Nebraska fan or a tourney fan selfishly I'm still alive with some of my final four I did have Bama last night sorry Bill Hooks and uh wow, good good on you I just thought look at their schedule they're not gonna blink they made smart plays they made big shots yeah. 
in the uh, North Dakota transfer um, was incredible. Uh, just great off the bench. So, it did in fact kill my bracket though. No, it didn't kill. Mine, I'm 20, but it did I mean, help. I'm 29th still in the <laughs> the hail bar. So I mean, I'm, I'm still brutal. But I'm not as brutal as Elijah. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Ha ha. Uh-huh. Very funny. Uh-huh. I'm 62nd in my be champion's quiet, house. Oh, be quiet, old man. I will hurt Who's you. Who is your champ? North Carolina. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Yeah. I'm dead. I, I'm going to lean Tennessee because I have Tennessee moving on. I also have Tennessee moving on. I just think I think they're too athletic. I have Creighton losing in the national championship game, so bet the house on Tennessee, folks. <laughs> when my bracket dies, it really dies, which means if UNC is out last night, Creighton's going to be out tonight. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm rooting for Creighton for my bracket, and because, honestly, at this time of year, like, it's the state of Nebraska. There's a lot of Nebraskans on that roster. I don't necessarily want to root for Creighton. That's just because of my upbringing being in Lincoln. Growing up as a Husker basketball fan, Creighton was the enemy a little bit, which – it's one of those rivalries. I never saw him as the it's, enemy it's, or it's, never. I mean, I'm never really annoyed it's, by him. It's I'm a, just, it's I'm a kind-hearted not. rivalry in like, I don't hate Creighton fans. I don't, ha- I don't hate Creighton, but you feel a little dirty rooting for Creighton. Yeah. And it's a little different now as, a, as somebody who's in the media. I can see it a little bit more uh, analytically as opposed to having the fan blinders on. And that's why, like, hey, there's so many Nebraskans on that Creighton roster. How could you root against the state of Nebraska personally? A That's couple me. of my good buddies are, are J-Skers, mm. and they're openly J-Skers, so I don't have to sugarcoat it for them. <laughs> but I've watched a pretty decent amount of Creighton this year because, like, they'll be at my apartment and they're watching it, and I'm like, I'm not going to not watch Big East. It's so, fun, and, yeah, it's fun it's to watch. Well, so. I mean, their style is super fun. I mean, I had a ton of fun watching their game against Oregon with a couple of them. So I'm for their sake, I'm I hope it's a great game. For my bracket's sake and – personal fandom's sake, I hope Tennessee wins, but I I think it'll be a good game. I mean, Creighton is fun to watch, especially when they're on, like that UConn game that you mentioned with Ashworth. I mean, that was a that ton was of fun bananas. to watch. So. so, good tournament, bad tournament, okay tournament. What what letter grade do you give it so far? Been a lot of blowouts, been some boring ball games, been some rock fight type scores, but then you get last night. Yeah, last night took it last from a C great. to a C plus That's fair. for me. And then tonight needs to deliver. You have the Creighton Oregon game that was incredible uh, as well. And you just hope the drama builds. Well, let's not forget AM Houston was a fantastic that game. That was nuts. There's that been was a handful. So what this tournament You've had about lacked, four games. It's lacked uh, enough close games and a Cinderella run. Hour two on the way with Hale Varsity. He's the pride of Fairbury, an average Joe. Bill Dolman, the professor. I had a 6 ACT in 1967. One time I got an A and my grandma beat me for cheating. Now with Hale Varsity Radio. Back into it, it's Hour 2. It's Hale Varsity powered by Cornhead Lager, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, Connor Clark. We welcome in the pride of Fairbury, NBC Sports, the professor, Bill Dolman, at Bill Dolman on Twitter. You hear him on the Average Joe Sports Show podcast. Billy D, you're uh, you're still rocking away in the office, man, grinding this late on a Friday. Good to see well, you. Know Thank you. News. Well, I saw the, the big news with Connor, and I'm trying to make sure that we can work the books well enough that he will actually graduate and can take that salt dog <laughs> job. But uh, So we're working, uh, everybody, this is a team effort. I'm Me- not the only one here. Meanwhile, so here- the clock job to make sure that he can get in that booth. Otherwise... Back in one of my classes, I guess. I don't know if there's anything you can do, Bill. We might be in too deep. Well, here in the studio, Bill, we're working on Connor's jump shot. So if all else fails, we can get him to the league. Uh, some people on the stream saw that. We've got the mini hoop set up outside the yeah. studio. Mm-hmm. We're working Connor's jumper. We're getting there with the consistency. The elbow's in. The hand's in the cookie jar. It's looking good. We need to knock it down with a little more consistency. But I, yeah. I think we can get him to the Just G keep League. point shaving, bro. If, <laughs> if you guys have a pair of stilts and some you know, drugs that I can use to make my muscles bigger, then maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll have a chance at the YMCA League. We could but, do that thing where like you, you you wear the big trench coat and you just stand on somebody's shoulders. We could try that. We could we could try that. <laughs> we want him going nowhere near a trench coat <laughs> on the road. <laughs> you just stay away, my friend. Yeah. You just stay away. Bill, how are you? What do you know? What do you think of it's been a busy week. We got to hear from Troy Dannon. I, I would love the intelligence and insight. Uh, what ways the wind blowing with the South Stadium? 
What did you think of Dan? And what do you think of Rule uh, this week? Is a lot of sound bites floating around. You know, what's interesting about the last week and a half is given what transpired the previous two weeks, it has really been, even though it's busy, relatively quiet Mm -hmm. around here comparatively to, you know, the way most of the month of March March has gone. And this is as quiet of a start to spring football as I can recall. And I know Matt Rule has, has gone to the pulpit we don't say podium anymore. They're not to the dais. Matt Rule went to the pulpit and spoke, you know, just before uh, Troy Dannon was announced as the new athletic director. And I brilliantly, te- you know, tweeted out as to why. And I think he knew then uh, that his athletic director was going to be Troy Dannon. And then spring football started on Sunday. And we've gotten, a, you know, some nice videos. And Nebraska's put out some videos. And the media's had its 20 minute sessions. Matt Rule has spoken, and we're all in on the, the 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 bug eaters and the old gold knights and the rattlesnake boys, and I'm sure there's going to be NIL deals abounding with those three teams on them. But for the most part, this has really been a quiet start to spring football, and it's almost it's almost refreshing. It feels like people feel like the Nebraska football program has settled a little bit. I don't mean settled for just kind of settled in into the routine and people are fine that Matt rules the coach and we're just waiting patiently for the spring game and fall. Well, let's say Husker basketball. I think went, it's healthy. If Husker basketball went eight and 25 this year, do you think there'd be the same <laughs> calm nature around Husker football? No, I think Matt rule no. probably would have gone out at halftime and they would have canceled red Panda and Matt rule would have <laughs> spoken to the crowd at PBA for 15 minutes. And then Fred's team would have taken the floor and, uh, that would have been the halftime show that would have gotten people into spring football. But, don't, I mean, it really has. People are, you know, talking about, well, we've got Dylan Rayola, and we've got Kalen, and Harburg took a snap here and there. It, it just seems like maybe for the first time in my, in my lifetime, people have spring football somewhat in perspective, that it's actually just practice. Practice and a chance to, to get better. Yeah, and when we talk about, you know, this theme of competition – it's it's I like what he's doing. I mean, there's tweaks and and how am I going to get my guys to perform? What's going to get them to to develop? And it's situational football, but it's three teams. And if he's got a team full of competitors versus just drilling and drilling and drilling, hey, let's go play and get better by by actually doing it. And hey, uh, whatever it takes to, to to push the right button, Bill, for this team to make a jump. I think most importantly is is he really does a great job, I think, of fostering camaraderie, team chemistry. Uh, You you know, yeah, you've got three different units, but those three teams within the the whole structure of the the organization, they're they're getting provincial, you know, and they're they're buying into each other and that competition is healthy and – while, while two teams are going at it, one's observing, and, you know, they're probably getting into it. There's probably a lot of shoulder slugging and, and uh, you know, John back and forth. And then they're, it, it, I, just, I just think that the way that they go about creating uh, the community within the Nebraska football team is really a, 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 an excellent case study. It's not as though there is that drudgery of going to practice at 6 o'clock in the morning. The whole staff is there early, right? But I, I think there's just something about that where instead of 100 people going to practice, well, Nebraska's case, 200 people going to practice, you have three units, right? So you have groups that are together that are taking pride and they're trying to win. And that, I just think that that probably makes it the, the time go by a little quicker and that, that, that just will have that team a little more cohesive as spring ball goes on and as they get into summer conditioning. It's Bill Dolman with us here on Hale Varsity Radio talking spring football and Husker football. And, Bill, what does it mean to you that really the, the bigger discussion point in the news cycle today is South Stadium? Is that project actually going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Is it dead in the water? Is it just delayed? What's what your it? level of care anymore? Yeah, what's, what's your <laughs> level of care with South Stadium? Because I'm at the point where I'm like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, South Stadium works fine just now. I'm in the opinion that – there will be renovations coming at some point. It's not going to happen in December. It's going to be delayed. That's where I'm at. Where are you at, and what's your level of care? Well, I care because Nebraska's, Nebraska wants to play. They want to be in the new uh, 
collegiate national football league. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that matters. Nebraska wants to be all in. There will be some programs that maybe over the next five years when, or maybe the next five months, who knows when, who knows when the next conference realignment is going to be, but there might be some programs in the, the big 10 and the sec who might just, maybe they just fold their cards and say, we just, we just don't have the money to compete in this way, be it either in stadium facilities, um, be it in NIL money, be it in bringing uh, athletes on staff and, and, and paid that way. There might be, there just may not be the stomach for it within some colleges and universities. So there might be some attrition that way. Or what's the word? Relegation. Um, where, you know what, we're not, gonna, we're not all in that way anymore. We're going to go to the Big 12. The, S- the ACC is not going to exist in probably three years. So it's going to be the Big Ten, the SEC, the Big 12, and whatever else is left over. Um, and maybe they just don't have the stomach for it. So when it comes to the stadium renovation, I think Nebraska fans are probably looking at it saying, yeah, we understand. But as we talked about two or three weeks ago when the whole Trev thing blew, uh, blew up, and I guess that was the plan for the stadium. But when the whole Trev thing went down, well, I guess that was the plan for the stadium, too. Um, people are saying, wait a minute here. We still haven't finished the other building. And we don't know what the final price tag is going to be on that. And we are not in a good economy right now. And there's an election coming up in November. And maybe in a couple of years, things will start to turn around, no matter who wins one way or the other. We just need a break right now. And then let's figure out what we're going to do with the tickets and what those plans are going to be. Trev had a big vision, but it just seemed like it had to be right now on his timeline. And I don't think Nebraska fans, as much as they are all in on the success of the Huskers, whatever the sport might be, we got to put more seats in for softball. Let's do it. Will both teams going to be better? Let's do it. We want to play volleyball every match at Memorial Stadium. Let's <laughs> do it. But we just need a bit of a break. And I think that's the smart thing. Bill, was the urgency of Trev in your mind a sign now looking back that maybe Trev's plan was to leave all along to get this across the finish line and then say his farewells. Is, is that maybe more evidence now that we have some more context around the stadium and some of the, the difficulties regarding the, the fundraising? I, I, I kind of lean that way. Yeah. Do I think he's wrong? No, not necessarily. I just think that Nebraska fans, I think the donor fatigue, um, whether you are a what, what was Bill Burns' term way back that kind of got donors of substance donors of substance okay the, even I even think the donors of substance were probably saying hold on a second here and those people who have been holding on to tickets in the South Stadium for decades were saying wait a minute here we may not have a lot of zeros on what we do give but show us a little care and love right, right. we've mm-hmm. been loyal what are you going to do with us and I think if there was a plan that people fully understood and understood how they were going to be taken care of and how they would be given an opportunity to be a part of the next era after the stadium had been reconfigured, maybe there would have been some understanding in that regard. And people, like I think some schools will do, maybe there's some attrition there saying, we, we just we can't afford those tickets anymore, right? And we're going to go to Lincoln and we want to enjoy the experience uh, outside or we're going to stay home and watch on TV. But um, I, I think for the most part, I think the fans needed a break, and I think Trev probably was going to make a break uh, within maybe five to seven. Maybe he would have lasted his entire contract. That put him right about, what, 59, 60 years old and maybe in line to be a conference or not the conference commissioner, be the football commissioner. Bill, I want to go back to, and I know it's just a hypothetical you know, situation that you're talking about, but what Big Ten teams in mind for you would be those schools that say – you know what, maybe we're not, you know, all in on this whole football thing, or we can't afford, or as you said, fold their cards on this entire football thing to be in, you know, what would inevitably be probably a Super League. Like, what teams in the Big Ten do you have in mind for that right now? Besides besides Nebraska, uh, Wisconsin, (laughs) Rutgers, (laughs) Illinois. Ohio State, Michigan, I think, I don't think they can play. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> I would think that there might be, you know, especially for the schools that are, you know, wholly dependent on taxpayer funding uh, and student fees and all that, you know, maybe maybe a Rutgers, you know, even though that's a big market with they say it's the New York market. 
but that may not be, you know, something that people are really all in on. Uh, you know, your school in your backyard, Northwestern, they've got a lot of money, but, you know, to, to want to compete and put those student athletes, those football players on s- staff, if you will, maybe they bow out. Maybe Vanderbilt, you know, Vanderbilt's got a lot of money uh, and they get a lot of money. Maybe they don't care. Maybe we're, we're fine with 40,000, 30,000 seats that are, have uh, 3,000 in them. We'll hey, take that TV check. We'll be, you know, we'll be fine. Maybe Vandy, they're in. Vandy I don't know. and Northwestern are both making renovations, though, football-wise. I know. I, I understand there. that. But, but you know, down the road, there's going to be more. There's going to be another price to pay somehow, some way. Bill, let's uh, go to the positions. And we were talking running backs. Is, is there a back in that room that's healthy and available you, uh, you think could emerge? Moving forward, is it going to be Dowdell? Do you like him at Johnson? Uh, do you have Ives as somebody? And then the other two dudes, Ramir and, and um, Gabe Irvin. Gabe Irvin, thank you, are, are not going right now. Is that my understanding? Correct. Right. I, I, I like all of those guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think we saw enough of Ives last year. I think people kind of fell in love with him because he was the guy that the new staff wanted. Right. So uh, they mu- they must really see something in the guy from Connecticut or they wouldn't have brought him in. So maybe there's a little bit of that, that he's the shiny toy that came in with the with the new coaching staff. I, I really thought Emmett Johnson was a kind of a star of the second or last third of the season. I, I really enjoyed watching him play. Mm-hmm. And he reminded me maybe a little bit of a go back in time to, you know, a Derek Brown, Good call. Um, Good call. something like that. Uh, I think there's a place for him. Dowdell obviously is going to be probably the focal point going into the fall because he comes from Oregon and he was in the transfer portal and people assume that he must be pretty good and he was high, pretty highly ranked coming out of Mississippi. Uh, I, I, you know, you feel for Gabe Irvin. He was the he was the poster uh, child last year for my uh, poster man, I guess you would say, for spring conditioning and all that. That he was all in on rule and what. So you hope he can come back. Ramir Johnson, I think, is going to be a great third down back for Nebraska. Probably not an every down back. Maybe he can return kicks. Um, I don't see that as Gabe Urban's role, but maybe Ramir Johnson becomes a special teams player and a third down guy. But I, I kind of root for Emmett Johnson. Um, I, I thought he was really pretty good last year, and I don't think people expected that. Bill, let's get your grade here on the NCAA tournament to date. What are you excited for this weekend? We got about 90 seconds. If we got to carry over a couple of minutes, we, we'll do up against a hard break. But give me a letter grade for the tournament. Oh, I don't think it's been, you know, that scintillating, you know, buzzer. Well, there haven't been many buzzer beaters. Texas A&M certainly gave people a thrill, but that really seemed like, you know, the only one that we've really had. And that was a spectacular game. And I was good to see my Cougars uh, pull that out. Uh, I really like Kentucky. I think Kentucky's done a great job. Oh, that's right. They were out day one, so is my bracket. <laughs> UConn looks fantastic uh, like they were supposed to. They Purdue has kind of surprised good. me. I think they played with more purpose than I think we've seen them maybe all year long, actually. Uh, so they might be more dangerous than people thought. I think the Kentucky or the uh, Creighton-Tennessee game may be the marquee game of the of the tournament, and that is tonight. Um, that one I'm really looking forward to, and if Creighton wins that, I look forward to their matchup with Purdue. Um, but I don't think they're going to get there. I think Tennessee is playing maybe its best basketball under Rick Barnes right now. And that's how, his entire tenure. How how good was Bama Carolina? Oh last night? boy, that was that was awesome. And then that was Iowa, a great game too. Iowa State, the rock fight that was. Uh, yeah. Last night, Illinois got, they, they got like something they could be going. A Final Four team. Well, I, I've got Illinois in there. As, uh, as long as Terrence Shannon stays out of foul trouble, there. Well, they got UConn to tomorrow. I know. Tall task. But uh, that I, that'll be interesting. Bill, hang tight for for two minutes on the other side. You good with that? Oh yeah, I got plenty of time. Okay. What else I got to do? <laughs> Work. Bill Dolman. <laughs> Make sure I graduate. Yes. <laughs> Make sure that file is clean. Uh, Hail Varsity continues on a Friday. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. And now, and now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Two burning questions for the pride of Fairbury. Bill Dolman, NBC Sports, the professor, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, Connor Clark, Friday edition with Hale Varsity, weekend edition tomorrow at 745 on the 
Hale Varsity YouTube channel. You can watch the show that way or on the social media channels. Two things. Where, what are you drafting for Sunday Easter dinner? Are you going ham? Are you going steak? Are you going turkey? We can throw chicken in there as well. Rack of lamb. What's what, what would what would Bill, what would uh, Bill Dolman have for dinner on Easter Sunday? Two Hoiberg or Kise in a three point contest. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I've seen your Saturday morning show, and it's seven forty five ish. It is. Um, Technical difficulties always. <laughs> Fashionably late is what I like to say. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, Easter, Easter dinner. Well, uh, bread and wine first. Sure. Good call. Uh, but, uh, I, I'm, I'm always. They only let you give you that line once, Bill. Just... <laughs> I'm, I'm, o- I'm always good on, uh, on the free dinner. So it really doesn't matter what I've given, <laughs> but, uh, I will, I, I will gladly do a little, little chicken, a uh, little steak. Um, uh, I'm not anti ham. I'm pro turkey, but anytime Elijah steak, hates ham. I am anti ham. Really? It's just, it's just okay. not good. Mm-hmm. All right. And his go big red well, shirt has a as a, a little uh, a little a little uh, Boris Yeltsin flavor to it as well. I, I don't. I don't that think you can go wrong with steak any time in Nebraska. So I'm, I'm Russia. A you call me a commie because I don't like ham. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, I guess. I I, I went Boris. I, I, didn't, sh- I didn't know if there was a reference. I, I didn't get there Putin. if you were just calling me a commie. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> didn't realize that was part of the ideology, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. Different, it was laid out by Karl Marx, actually. Different, different go big red. Yes. Um, yeah. So, and then and Fred, then, and, Fred and or then, Kise? Well, I just saw the release uh, that, that it's, that uh, Kise has been um, invited to the, in, uh, to the, Slam dunk and three point shooting contest. I want to just clarify that he's there for the three point shooting contest or the yes. dunk contest. He's there for the three point shooting contest. Okay, all right. I just, just you know, the way it was the way it was written was that he's there for both. Um, I mean, maybe I don't know. Look, I saw the video. All right, Fred can still shoot. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't have the, the quick trigger that you know a twenty three year old guy has. But if I'm looking for somebody long term. I'm going Fred. That he's got to be the best shooting coach in the country. Didn't he beat? I mean, according to him, didn't he beat him in the video? He said he went 25 for 25. I don't know if I believe that oh, because they a, cut oh, the video. I thought off, he so. scored 25 and Kise scored 28. But if he went 25 for 25, well, that's what that's what he claimed in the video. Well, I don't know. He's the boss too, so uh, <laughs> not anymore. But, <laughs> <laughs> I, but I, I, I was impressed by by the Fred still has the stroke. That 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 guy was a great NBA shooter. He's still a great shooter, and now that we know that he's still a great shooter, I would expect Nebraska's three point shooting to continue to be uh, pretty good each and every year. But look, I hope Kise does well, and I hope he's not in the slam dunk contest. <laughs> it's a Bill Dolman with us here on Hale Varsity. And Bill, I know we said two big questions for you before we get you out, but we got to go to the stream here for a uh, second. Our friend Moonbot in the Mile High City. I don't know if he's visited a dispensary recently. This question he asked maybe indicates that he has. Might be there right now. <laughs> he asks, would you rather be friends with a leprechaun that gives you gold or become a vampire with none of the weaknesses of being a vampire? That Man. strikes me as a post-dispensary question. I don't know. I turn it over to Bill Dolman. What is your answer? Neither. Uh, I, I think I'd rather hang with the uh, with the leprechaun. You know, uh, the, the whole vampire thing kind of gives you the willies. Right? Reminds me of Creature Feature and Doctor Sanguinary back in the uh, the late seventies. Okay, you all remember that? Uh, no, huh? I, I all, do not. All your your generational listeners, Gen Xers that know that reference. So no vampires for me. Whiffin. The the thing with the vampire without any of the weaknesses, I think, is just immortality. Like that's it kind of yeah yeah all you the just weaknesses have like fangs. Are, yeah you have fangs but you and wouldn't have the desire for blood that's a weakness in pale. my book well you wouldn't have the paleness because I consider that a weakness because you you can't handle the sun so if you can well, handle the sun would you be as pale probably not true like, I guess garlic no issues there wooden stakes through the heart no issue there like you just become <laughs> immortal 
I, I guess. The whole murder thing has me hung up, but you know. But you wouldn't have the, the desire for blood, because I consider that a, 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 a very big weakness of vampires, that they do desire the fresh Moonbot blood. says, yes, guilty. <laughs> I am definitely smoking. <laughs> Thank you for that, Moonbot. <laughs> he and for- Cheech and Chong are out hanging around uh, Colfax Avenue in Denver trying to figure out life's uh, biggest questions. I think oh. it is an important question to ask. Are we still moving? Why would you not want to hang out with a leprechaun with a pot of gold? Yeah, that'd be because leprechauns be are like kind of fun. Leprechauns are little freaks. Yeah, yeah but they give, he's of- giving you gold, <laughs> opposed to the undead. But do I have to mm-hmm. hang with them? Like, eh. <laughs> no, no. Bill, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Pick me up. <laughs> Go fix my grades. 3,800 Cornhusker. Just <laughs> leave the car running. I will run. <laughs> jump in. You guys tap out. We may or may not have a Clausburn sighting. He's working on a uh, Scotty Pippen esque migraine. So, oh, that's there. Bad. There we have it. We'll get our well, look, selections. Look, if, you know, for the le- leprechauns are Irish, so there's got to be a lot of Guinness to go with that gold. Mm, so, uh, I'm all there in there on the, is uh, the. Uh, there it is. I'm the all silver in on lining. That. Bill, we'll catch up this weekend for a little hoops action. Appreciate you jumping on, man. Thanks for the time okay, today. Hey, boys. Happy Easter to you all. You too, bud. There he is, Bill Dolman with us. Proud of Fairbury, NBC Sports, and uh, yes, the professor. How about this? Back so, to work. A, as we go back to work, a legitimate question in the stream that I think is actually an interesting one from Ken as we talk transfer portal additions. Would you rather have, Nebraska, an NBA quality you, point Ken. guard or an NBA quality big man? Ooh, that's a great that's a question. That's a great question. Well, let's just look at last season. You made do, right, with with your with your four that could handle the ball, relieving some of your, your ball handling problems. Uh, give me a point guard. Give me an athletic point guard that can also defend. And listen, nobody was, was stopping A&M to the rack. Certainly Houston had their problems with it as well, so they're kind of off to the side as an outlier. Uh, much like Illinois and Terrence Shannon, you just can't deal with him getting downhill. And it's funny because you saw Nebraska go up 15 on Illinois. <laughs> you saw uh, a situation where yeah, somebody take a screenshot of that scoreboard, right? And then you also saw Nebraska kind of have it until it may have been taken uh, at Illinois, or at least it, it, they didn't they didn't get any road help. So. That's a team that's very serious about a Final Four run. We'll see what they do against UConn in that defense. But give me a point guard because you give me a point guard for Nebraska this season that can defend, that can can penetrate, can handle the ball. Not that Nebraska was awful, but they had some games that turnovers were issues. Point guard for me, they've made do with what they've had big guy for the last couple of years. But point guard's my pick. I think either answer is, 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 is right. Is yes, having yes, any NBA yes. quality I point mean, guard or any NBA quality player on I'm, your team is a good thing. Yes, just, is the answer because is it's it's A and B or A one and one uh, A for yeah, for yeah. Nebraska I, this off season. I, I just look at a lot of teams that had NBA quality point guards that did not have the type of seasons that you'd expect. I mean, remember whenever Georgia Tech came to Lincoln with uh, Alvarado as yeah. their point guard, who is a six-man type NBA point guard. Did, did you think he was going to be going to the league? I didn't. That Georgia Tech team was fine that year. They were nothing special. I look, how, about, how about Blanton <laughs> when he was here? I, I mean, mean, you weren't great. He's an NBA quality guy. You look at whatever you have a dominant big man in college basketball. Zach Eady, I don't think anyone thinks is truly going to set the world on fire in the NBA. He's going to get pro looks. He doesn't have a skill set that necessarily translates. Uh, Donovan but, Klingon. But look what he's done for that Purdue program. You could say the same about Luca Garza in Iowa. Iowa really hasn't been the same since Luca Garza went out the door. You talk true NBA quality centers like Chet Holmgren at Gonzaga. That team was a wagon once he got things going. They were really, really hard to beat. I mean, big guys how many in college games did they win with Holmgren? Wasn't like twenty something. A lot. They, they uh, don't translate. Big guys in college ball. If you throw back. Throw it to him in the paint while it wins in the Big Ten and it wins and gets you in March. It doesn't you, win you the national championship. Not yeah. always. And it doesn't translate to the next level because if you're a big guy, you better be able to launch and go 6-12 six, uh, six from three-point land. Well, uh, you, you better be the joker or at least some sort of skill set similar where you handle it and you can stretch and hit from deep. It's not throw it on the block and get your Ewing turnaround. I'm looking at like going back – to this season and kind of going over some losses. I think of Nebraska as an NBA 
level big man, they absolutely do not lose at Rutgers. Nope. I think the game at Maryland is a lot closer than What's it, it was. What's it do for him against A&M, though? I mean, What's it, it do it, for him it, against it, Illinois? Those are the two, your last two games of the year, your last two losses, what killed you? Well, it a big man that helps you against Illinois, and I know this is easier said than done, but obviously. But that rim protection but with y- Shannon. Exactly. You you clog up the paint a little bit more. He's not had you any have, issues. You well, have more you have rebounding an, against an A&M. quality center, I don't think Terrence Shannon puts up 40 points. I, he I still agree. puts up 25. I also okay, agree with that. Okay, but <laughs> you're still in that basketball game if Terrence Shannon scores 15 points less because who else was scoring for Illinois in the second half? Aside from that couple-minute stretch where Damask poured one in and Ryan Hawkins uh, – well, they, they, they had Coleman they, Hawkins, there it's not good three. They, they had other options, and, you know, Opie went off last night for about nine points, but they were nine key points for for Illinois. I'm just – if you put, like – and he From a have physicality to be this standpoint, yeah, your your big guy, agree with both of you on that. But the point guard it was an issue for Nebraska. They got to fix it next season. What might be, and this isn't the be all end all. It's not the perfect comparison. But the way I see it, having an NBA or a high level center raises a team's floor. Having that NBA quality point guard or just guard in general raises a team's ceiling. Is that fair to say? Well, what what's going to yeah. win in March? It's guard play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's Terrence Shannon. It's guard play. It's UConn's dudes. That It's Creighton's fellas that are going to be able to handle the ball and, and drive and kick or launch from three. But get to the rack. What, what was the key last night for Bama? They were able to get to the rim. They play so fast. They do. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a pace and a tempo thing, too. You can go at your own style and pace and – the opposition's got to adjust to you. I just look back through some teams through the past decade that have had NBA quality centers, and it's just a boatload of great teams. DeMarcus Cousins at Kentucky. Carl yeah. Anthony Towns at Kentucky. Anthony Davis was fantastic back in college. Chet Holmgren. The, the, what are the, the what NBA are they, centers. I was say, what do they, DeAndre uh, Ayton. And aside from Ayton, you, you mentioned Boogie, right, and, and AD. They have all upped their game and stretched their game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the way the game is moving. I should know among those teams – did any of them win a national title? I don't think they did, but they were all fantastic top five level teams. Well, one of them almost AD didn't won lose one a game with Kentucky. Did he win one? Yeah. I thought they got bounced. Twenty the first, but I think it was two and through, or was he just one and done? He was one and done. I thought Kentucky won a title. Maybe they got beat by Carolina, but they, they were got there beat for by it. Wisconsin that one year that they hmm. were undefeated. Ah, on Wisconsin. And now, and now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Back with you, it's Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Logger. Anonymous checks in is all I know if Rick Barnes continues his career long pattern of underachieving and failing in the tournament tonight. I will be extremely pissed. <laughs> Rick Barnes started the Clemson, ended up at Texas, recruited Kevin Durant, found his way to Rocky Top. Guy's got over 800 wins, so, I mean, he's good in the regular season, but uh, Slick Rick, there's a lot of coaches that you can call Slick Rick. I, I, I think he's all right, but yeah, they need to, to, to make some hay with uh, this opportunity, and we'll see if they do it. I have a slight correction that I do want to make from last, eight, or last time. Schmitty was correct. Never argue a sports stat with him. Uh, Anthony Davis did win a national title at Kentucky. That was Calipari's only national title. It was the 2014-2015 team, which featured the Harrison Twins, Devin Booker, Carl Anthony Towns, Willie Cauley-Stein. That was the team that went undefeated and lost to Wisconsin in the Final Four. Anthony Davis, though, did win a national title. That was the season after John Wall. Let's get the forecast cranked up. We'll see if Claus joins the party. uh, Wish him well. This holiday weekend, if he's got an ice bag on his uh, Santa hat. So, Marquette, NC State, the fighting Shakas at minus seven and a half. That thing will tip off here in about 15 minutes. <sighs> Give me NC State. That's what my that's what my heart's telling me. I love big man basketball. They're a ton of fun. My heart, though, is being overruled. Give me Marquette. Give me Marquette to cover. 68 to 59 as the Golden Eagles move on in the dance. Elijah. 
I think I gotta take. NC State for one reason and one reason you only. You want it? I'm going to be biased. I love DJ Burns. Big that, fella. That is a dude that should be playing. Chalk has never made it out of the first round since that only Final Four. I was say, DJ Burns, though, is a guy that should be playing in the NFL. He's got that type of <laughs> offensive tackle like size with the, the dancing bear type feet. There's the story of like freshman year of high school. like The coaches wanted to come out for football. He said, no, nah, I'm going to be a basketball player. So he stuck with basketball. I think he'd be a hell of a football player. Regardless, I love watching him play basketball. Just the ultimate dancing bear. I think he leads NC State to victory tonight. Give me uh, NC State to win. Uh, Let's think of a score here. What, 78-75? Okay. Close one. Connor, what do you say? NC State's been really fun to watch. I thought uh, coming out of the ACC tournament, they shot all their bullets, winning five games (laughs) in five days. I'm kind of stupid for that, though, being a basketball fan, because the last time a team did that was 2011 UConn, and they won the entire thing. Mm. Granted, that UConn team was a little bit better than the NC State team. I think the run ends here. I think Marquette's just a little bit too good, and that pains me to say. I don't think they cover, though. I think Marquette wins 79-75 in a good one. Gonzaga, Purdue. I think this will be a ton of fun. TBS. Round 640 Central, Purdue minus five and a half. You know, Gonzaga's surprise. There was a, a point this season where they were they were bubblicious. They have mm-hmm. fast forwarded. I love their style. I love their tempo. And uh, they really do get to the rim. Problem is, is Mount Edie is standing there. Purdue keeps on keeping on, and they can score. They've got shooters. They are complete. They are on a mission. They keep that mission going. 82 to 71 Purdue win and cover uh, but it's not a blowout tonight Elijah I got Gonzaga I think straight up who is the guy that had 10 blocks against Northwestern I, I'm excited to see that matchup uh, against Zach Eady see how he fares there kind of you remember the guy's name I don't have it off the top of my from head. from like, Gonzaga from back in the day like, no from like last week they didn't they never played Gonzaga they played UConn oh I'm thinking of the who did Gonzaga play last week they didn't um, do with the whole they bunch of played, blocks. They uh, played, gosh, who did they play? Kansas. Yeah, they did do with a whole bunch of blocks. Who was that guy? I don't know. I don't know. Regardless. Hunter Dickinson? I don't know. Let's the score. Regardless, I'll take Gonzaga to win in this one, 76-74. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to go with Purdue here. They dismantled a pretty good Utah State team last week. I'm going to go Purdue 82 and Gonzaga 70, so right around Schmidt's score. Okay. Duke Houston. Houston showed they can score when they have to versus keeping things at, you know, the uh, the room temperature of 65 degrees. Duke, though, looks different. They are hitting from downtown, and it's annoying for those of you who <laughs> don't like Duke. Minus four and a half. I think Houston's just too physical, too tough, too deep. Uh, Sheed is your difference. Give me the Cougars. Give me Dolman's Cougars to uh, move on. And uh, keep on rolling here. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit better scoring, but it, it'll still be below 70. 65, 59, win and cover for the Cougars. I took Duke to the Elite Eight in my bracket. I'm going to roll with my bracket. I'm going to take the Blue Devils to win here with no reason other than my heart uh, and hoping that my bracket is uh, better tomorrow than it is today. Uh, I'll take the Blue Devils. I'll take the Blue Devils to win it. In a low, lower scoring affair, 67 to 63. I have Houston in my national championship game, so I'm going to continue to ride with the Cougars. I think they're too tough for Duke, honestly. I don't know if Duke can really handle that type of physicality. I'm going to go the Cougars 70 and the Blue Devils 64. Creighton in Tennessee, Rocky Top, an amazing fight song. Creighton, and uh, I know that the pharmacist Jeff, dear friend Jeff, went to Creighton. Pharmacy school there, old buddy Vince Powers, proud Creighton guy as well. You know, I I like what the, the Jays can do. I think the run ends, though. I think Tennessee's too physical, too talented, and they, they have some depth. They have a tenacity. Just watching a little bit of Tennessee this year, I think they'll just beat up Creighton. Now, if Creighton's hot, forget about it. They can kill anybody. But give me Tennessee. The line's minus three and a half. Tennessee wins by three. They don't cover, though. Creighton with the cover. Elijah. Uh, I see Tennessee as the favorite here. I think Creighton is the team to watch out for with that shooting. 
whenever they've been on, this Creighton team has been, you could argue, one of the best teams in the country. Mm-hmm. They haven't been on all season long. They felt like they were on in the tournament. They had the scare last week. I think they're going to knock down some shots early. I think they're going to scare Tennessee with that early. I think they're going to stay hot. Uh, maybe not coast to a victory, but I think it's going to be more comfortable than some people even think. Give me Creighton 82, Tennessee 72. Okay. Yeah, I think Tennessee does win, but it feels like Creighton is due for that kind of yeah. just breakout shooting performance. UConn-esque from, I believe that was early February. So that makes me a little bit nervous, but I also don't know on Creighton who's going to stop the SEC Player of the Year in Dalton Connect. So that's another matchup to look out for. I'm going to go tennessee In a close one, I'm going to go 82-79, the Vols win. Dalton Connect is a pure treasure to watch. He's awesome. Him and Shireman can really light it up. We'll get some Elite Eight picks. Who is headed to the Final Four out of the East Region and West Region? Is it Illinois, UConn, Clemson? Hey, look, Clemson and Bama get to play again. (laughs) Woohoo! <laughs> this is a little different. We'll wind down a Friday forecast and uh, the week edition here of Hale Varsity. 489-1240, numbers to get in. Always watch the show, subscribe and like the Hale Varsity YouTube channel, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, where you can get the podcast. We'll wind down the forecast. It's next, Hale Varsity, and we're powered by Cornhead Lager. And now, and now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. One final time on a Friday, Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Lager, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, Connor Clark. Find us on Twitter at Schmidt underscore radio, at Herbal Essence for Elijah, at C underscore Clark underscore 27. That is how you can find uh, Connor. I can repeat it because it is kind of long. At C, just a little long. Underscore Clark, underscore twenty seven. It looks good in writing. Uh-huh. That's that's my method behind. Just a lot of Connor Clarks roaming the earth, so yeah. you got to differentiate. And while we're talking Twitter handles here, let's note Herbal Essences. The Herbal is spelled with an E. It is not like the hair care company. That's the joke. We're gonna throw that. No, out it's there good. Now. Yeah, it's decent. It's and, great. That's a, that's a good take, and I'm sh- I'm sure there was no cease and desist. And Schmidt is the. S C H M I D T underscore radio. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure you get Schmidt spelled correctly. It can be a tough one. Germanic name? Completely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the D is silent. So we got all the Twitter handles laid out now. It's spelled correctly. The D T, not the two T's or just the D. You can find but, Schmidt on Facebook, myself, not so much. I think I have a profile. I've been wondering like how many friend requests I have. I haven't looked into. It's been like two years since. Go I've find Elijah on LinkedIn. Yes. Yes, actually, send me a request. Yeah. Let's had, get to the I'm, picks. I'm connected with a couple of listeners on LinkedIn, but yeah, let's get to the picks. <laughs> Here we go with the Elite Eight: Illinois, UConn. Does the Terrence Shannon Jr. show continue? Coleman Hawkins is a wear out. <laughs> Frank Underwood, as I call him. Psycho. He looks like a deranged Nick Nolte. Did you see him with the water guns in the locker room last night? A little bit. (laughs) But he... (sighs) Does he get it done, or does UConn just too much? Because you need need the supporting cast to have career nights. You need... I'd say use your brain on this one. It's UConn. Yeah. Right? It's got to be, right? Eight eight and a (laughs) half's high. I mean, can, yeah. they, can they stop Terrence Shannon to the rack? UConn, 74, Illinois, 70. Give me UConn. Give me the Illinois Cup. To me. Is that I, too, too few a points? To, to me, eight and a half points for, for UConn is, that's, I'm, I'm airing Illinois all day with that. Yeah, Ter- Terrence Shannon Jr. is the best player on the floor. You saw how different Illinois looked whenever he was on the bench last night with those four fouls. That is the only thing that gives me pause in terms of picking an outright Illinois victory. I think having the best player on the floor in Terrence Shannon Jr. is a big help. Because of how limited Illinois is without him, I can't take them to win outright. But I will take them to cover the points. Give me UConn 81 and Illinois 79. The TSJ versus Tristan Newton, Tristan Newton rather, matchup is going to be awesome. UConn is just so good, and they've destroyed everybody that's not in the Big East. I'm going to be bold here. I'm going to go UConn by 10. Wow. I'm going to go 81-71 Huskies. 
Okay, let's head to Bama Clemson. Okay, I love Bama, what they're doing. I love their guard play. They got physicality down low. I mean, they were able to just keep trading punches with some big dudes at Carolina. Clemson's a nice story. They put a good run together. They've served the ACC well. <laughs> Anonymous, Underwood v. Hurley. I'm rooting for an asteroid. That's pretty good. <laughs> Give me Bama to the Final Four. They cover it uh, 79-71 over Clemson. 76-70 Bama. Oh, sorry, 86-80 Bama. Their offense is too good. Uh, I just don't see Clemson scoring enough points. Yeah, I'll go 81-75 Bama. Roll tide. All right, even on the hoops, they can't be escaped. Back tomorrow morning, 7.45-ish, with a weekend edition on the Hale Varsity YouTube channel. Take care.